So here we have some russet grass, Ludicia simplex, growing in tufts here. Um, very attractive inflorescence actually. I really like this. It's one of my favorite grass species. Um, hard to focus once again with my camera. And then I'm going to move across and down. And you'll see something that's got kind of green strappy leaves. I'm going to approach that now. That is actually Xerophyta retinervus, which is Arpstadt or Bobby Arnstadt, which means baboon or ape or monkey tail. Um, you can see there's kind of like a, a very dark stem, it looks almost burnt, and then strap like leaves that come from it. So it's a monocotyledonous plant because it has parallel veined leaves. It has beautiful sort of lilac flowers, quite large, and they smell magnificent. Um, it smells like vanilla. Not many people know that. They haven't ever tried to <laughs> crouch down and smell it. But it's also known as the resurrection plant because it dries up, the leaves dry, curl and dry up and get all brown during the dry season. But if you water it, uh, within a very short space of time, it'll suddenly be green again. So hence the name a resurrection plant. So here's a closer look at the stem of the Arpstadt or baboon's tail um, or monkey tail. It looks very dry and stumpy and, and sort of black, fire burnt uh, black. And then it's got the strap like leaves coming in from the crown. Uh, that's also typical actually, incidentally, um, of monocotyledonous plants. So it's still raining. Um, I'm under these trees right now. If you look at the yellow bark of this tree, this is a fever tree, Acacia xanthiflua. Tends to like having its feet wet, so it grows often in low lying valleys and things. This one's been planted here. Um, it's one of the acacia trees, and um, it's called a fever tree because it used to be associated with malaria. They used to think it caused malaria, but the reality is, is that it just occurred in areas where Anopheles mosquitoes tended to be and hence the fact that people got malaria by contracting the disease from the mosquito which lives in wetland areas. Oftentimes when you walk around you'll look over or overlook rather a lot of the plants that grow very close to the ground and sort of like ground covers. This is Altananthera pungens and you can see it growing here amongst the sandstone rocks. This is Aristida congesta um, it's called Aristida, um, three on grass, because you can see here, if you look at, carefully at the seeds, um, it's got kind of three awns coming from each of those little seeds. So three little sort of uh, tendrils coming from the seeds, hence the name three on grass, Aristida congesta. So this little bush in front of me, is one of the Asclepias. I'm not sure which one. It could be Gomphocarpus pruticosis. Um, it's one of the milkweed family, uh, which are usually toxic, but they are very good for butterflies, especially the monarch butterflies, so they're quite attractive. And this is Asystasia gangetica. You can see the flowers here. These are pretty little flowers, and you find them often along the coastline in South Africa. Asystasia gangetica. So this is a weed, it's called blackjack, um, Bidens pilosa, and here we see the flowers, and if I move closer here, and kind of zoom in here, you can see the seeds, which have um, sort of bristles on them, and stick to everything, and hence the name blackjacks. So I'm looking at the dam now, uh, there's some water lilies floating on the dam, and there's some reeds up ahead, Phragmites reeds mixed up with uh, cat's tails, type of latifolia or bulrushes as they're commonly known in this area. Um, there was a little stone chat sitting there which is unusual to see usually in the sort of in the grasslands but um, you also find a lot of bishops here. Um, red bishops and black wing bishops, uh, those kinds of birds which are very brightly red colored with black and that's the male anyway and they nest in these long reeds. Um, I've also seen thick-billed weavers here which have a very characteristic nest. This is Cleome maculata, the spider wart family. Uh, Cleome maculata. 
It's there we go. Try and have a better look at this side. And there you can see it's kind of a dark mark, hence the name maculata, on the petals. Here we have a very, very moist area overgrown with weeds. Uh, we've had a lot of rain this season. We've got uh, khaki boss in the front here. Tajiti's minuta. Then we've got blackjack in the back. Um, Barens pilosa. There we go. There's a blackjack. Then we've got a bush which has kind of fluffy things on it. Over, over. Let me just focus in. That's Coniza bonariensis. And then if I come up here and out a little, this is wild dacha or Leonotus, Leonotus disophila, I think, which is um, from the mint family, uh, called wild dacha or bushman's tea uh, or bushman's tobacco sometimes as well. This tall weed, which is from the daisy family, um, compositi, is uh, Coniza binariensis, as far as I remember. Uh, it's just one of the many, many daisy species that occur all over southern Africa. Um, yeah, the name Compositi or Asteraceae for the daisy family. This is Crotillaria gatiflora. Um, it's also called the rattle pod because the pods have um, seeds that rattle in them when they dry out. And you've got very, very colorful flowers. You can see them here. So this is Daes cotinifolia. It's from the Tiliaceae or linden family. Bark can be used for cordage. This pretty little flower is Dianthus moyensis. Um, you get a lot of Dianthus flowers that are found in gardens. But really frilly edges to the petals. Dianthus moyensis, very pretty. Here we have a grass, another grass called Digitaria Ariantha. And we've got the sandstone as the background. Really nice sandstone. If I pan across here, you can see that the sandstone is very, very um, eroded and weathered um, very very interesting formations um, hollows and things that have developed in these rocks so it's a sedimentary rock um, very very interesting so here we have Gallinsoga parviflora one of the many flowers that you find growing as pioneers along the sides of the roads um, this is in the Krugerstorp area and I'm going to take you through and show you some more plants like this this is Bachelor's Button, Gonfrina solosioides, a typical weed that grows along the side of the road. This is a cool little flower, it's called Hemizygia pretoriensis. Um, tiny little flower that grows in amongst the grass tufts. Um, very, very pretty little flower. So it's just started raining, but um, we're here next to a lavender tree, Heteropixis natalensis, and it's a pretty cool lavender tree. Um, it's got the name because if you crush the leaves, it's got a nice lavender smell. It's a small little tree, doesn't get very big, but um, nonetheless quite an interesting tree. Uh, indigenous to South Africa. Really like it. Here we have Lophalina corifolia, and we've got a sulfur butterfly flying around. This bush is typical in this area, also a rocky uh, sandstone kind of quartzite area. This grass is Melanus repens or Natal Red Top. Um, I might be wrong on the species, but it's definitely a Melanus species. Um, and you can see the very fluffy inflorescence. If I try and focus on that, there we go. Here's another grass. It's called um, Monosymbium cerisiforma, or boat grass is one of the common names they use for it. You can see. Uh, it kind of looks a little bit like little boats on the on the individual florets. He has a very nice specimen of the Plantago lanceolata. Um, it also occurs in disturbed areas, often in moist areas as well. Okay, Plantago lanceolata. So this is Pogonastria squirosa. herringbone-like uh, inflorescence branches. 
which is pretty cool. This interesting plant is Samotropha mucinifolia. It's quite a small plant and I've seldom seen it, seen it flowering. But a very, very interesting little plant. Samotropha. So this is Rus Michalis montanum, um, which means it's from the Michalisberg Mountains. And it's a very low growing tree actually. Um, and it has trifoliate leaves, uh, which is typical actually for this genus. Um, they actually, the genus changed from Rus, Rus R H U S, Rus species, which is um, it's now being changed to Sears here. Um, here we go. I'll get a closer look now. It's actually related to people from the northern hemisphere will know. Um, actually, North America will know that it's uh, related to the staghorn sumac. So all the Rus species there are related to this. So here we have Rus lancia. You can see the leaves are trifoliate. In other words, they're compound leaves with three leaves coming from one point. And um, we call these also, apart from calling them curry, we also call them wild currants. So here we have a black locust tree, which is actually an exotic, Robinia pseudo acacia. Um, North Americans will be familiar with this as a weed too. Um, you can see some of the pods here. This is not the greatest specimen, but it's a Scabiosa columbaria. Um, they've got quite attractive little inflorescences, but this is not a good example, as I said. I'll try to find another one somewhere along. So the Brazilian pepper, uh, Shinus molly, um, if you take these little seeds and you kind of crush them in your fingers like this and sniff them, it smells completely like pepper, hence the name. So this is one of these introduced trees which can be a problem as a, an introduced species, but they're not too common in this area. This is quite a lucky find. We have a boo bean, a weeping boo bean that's growing here. It's got these very, very nice dark scarlet red um, or ruby red flowers. It attracts some sunbirds and bats as well, fruit bats. Yeah, we have another daisy, Senecio venosus. Uh, I'll try and get a bit more of a close up. Characteristic is the sort of light blue gray colored leaves, um, fairly elongate. Um, Senecio venosus. And then just to my right here. Um, it's past its sell by date unfortunately. This is Helichrysum cetosum. Um, it's also from the daisy family. It gets these really large chilo or heads, um, in other words flower inflorescences of the daisy type with yellow flowers. You can see it's got the spiny leaves as well. Uh, very attractive but unfortunately as I said it's past its sell by date. This is Solanum mauritianum. It's a weed. It's called bugweed. It's a bit of a problem because um, a lot of the doves like to, like to eat the fruits and and it means that they end up neglecting the indigenous trees that also need to be dispersed so it can be a bit of a problem but it's got a very pretty flower from the potato family of course a typical flower Solanum mauritianum grows a lot in disturbed areas this appears to be a sow thistle Sonchus oleraceae uh, so thistle growing on the side of the road. Typical spot to find it. Um, an area where there's good drainage, um, a disturbed area, and an area where there's quite a lot of rainfall that would come in. So this is called stomfrug, or wild apricot. Um, stomfrug means that the fruit grows directly on the stem, and um, you can actually see over here. I approach closer. This is an old fruit that's hanging from a stem and it's actually an apricot like fruit. It is edible. Its scientific name used to be Bacquatio dendron Michalis montanum. This is what is known as bankrupt bush, Stiebel vulgaris. Um, it has these white galls. You can look, if you look carefully, you'll see the white galls sitting there in between all the flowers. Very characteristic of it. It's called bankrupt bush because it's usually in indicative of land that has been overgrazed 
and generally neglected. Here's another little flower. Um, these are, I believe, Satira floribunda. In the viewfinder, it's actually looking very, very pale in color. Um, with my eyes, it looks more purple, um, kind of a light sort of mauve purple. So it is difficult sometimes to capture the colors of the, the flowers that you see in the felt. So here we have an exotic tree called Tecoma stans, which grows as a weed in the country. Tecoma stans. This is a Cape honeysuckle, uh, indigenous, so it attracts a lot of sunbirds. Very nice little flower, uh, flowering creeping bush. This pretty little daisy is called Ursinia nana. It doesn't have a common name, unfortunately, but still it's quite an interesting little daisy. So here we have a very pretty Vernonia and it's got kind of these sort of pinkish uh, flowers. They actually look quite different in to my eyes compared to the screen. But anyway, um, and there's another Vernonia which is much darker in color. Um, it's probably the same species, just two different uh, bush varieties here. Um, but if you look at the flower structure, both Vernonias and just have a closer look at that one there. And you can see the flowers are very much the same. So uh, I believe it's the same species of Vernonia. These little bell shaped flowers are Wallenbergia. Um, they are blue. Once again, it's not showing on the screen, but uh, Wallenbergia is one of the little flowers that grows in this area. He has a tiny little spreading bush. It's called Wallafrida densiflora. This one's actually growing on grass in someone's lawn. Um, but Wallafrida densiflora, a pretty little plant that grows on the ground.